Welcome to this Illinois Tech Preview Day Computer Science Talk. My name is Matthew Bauer. I teach in the Computer Science Department at IIT. And if you'd like to follow along to this uh, session and download uh, the example programs we're going to work on, here's a link that you can uh, bring up on your browser. So this is what that, that uh, page will be. I'm going to first do a little bit with that presentation, and then we're going to do this example, this finite state machine example. That's what we're going to work on. So the first thing is just what computer science theory can be demonstrated by a vending machine. So if you think about a vending machine, there's uh, various inputs to the vending machine. They are limited. It's not uh, an infinite number of inputs. You could put in a, an old-fashioned one, you put uh, put change into the machine. There's buttons to choose. Uh, maybe there's a display, how much money's in the machine. And the action of a vending machine is, is actually what's in computer science called a finite state machine. So the different states of the vending machine are how much money is currently in the machine. And then the transitions between states, as you put more money in the machine or you hit a button to try to purchase something or you hit the, the change return, those are how you transition between different states of the machine. And a good vending machine, for example, won't let you just keep putting money, keep put, putting more and more money in the machine. It will, if you, let's say the most expensive thing is 25 cents. If you try to put more than 25 cents in, it should just return your money back and go back to that state of 25 cents in the machine. Uh, if you try to purchase something where you don't have enough money yet in the machine, it should just keep you in that state of, I have maybe 20 cents in the machine, which is not enough to purchase something. So the different states have inputs, which transition to new states, possible outputs. If uh, you have enough money in there and you choose uh, one of the items, it should give you that item or it will uh, re return extra change, so that's another possible output. Now, uh, so it's something you're very familiar with, a vending machine. Uh, finite state machines are used in computer science in many different areas, in grammar checking and compilers, in things like HTML, uh, how they uh, render the HTML in a browser, uh, also network pro uh, communication protocols, or if you played SimCity, that's basically a finite state machine. So in my introduction to object-oriented programming class, CS115, we do an example of a finite state machine. So what I try to do in my programming courses is not just programming assignments to learn the different uh, aspects of programming and the syntax. I try to connect it to more advanced topics in computer science. So even this, this is just the first semester course in object-oriented programming, we want to learn a little bit about finite state machines. So uh, you, you can actually go uh, click on these couple links. You can see what the lab assignments were uh, that I did in my CS115. And these are basically assignments uh, on to learn some object-oriented design and programming issues. But th this particular example is called Bob's Life. So you're going to implement a finite state machine for Bob. And Bob has his different states are he's either at home or he's at work or he's at the gym, so those are his possible states. He also has three different characteristics, his hunger, his fitness, and the dollars. And when he goes home, he uh, decreases his hunger because he eats a meal, but he can't go, uh, the hunger, can't, he can't get uh, below zero. His dollars are decreased by one because his food costs money. When he goes to work, he gets more money, but he gets hungry. When he goes to the gym, he gets more fit. So there's these different attributes about Bob, and you're going to make uh, the students wrote a class to represent Bob, and you could send them to these different states, and there, there are certain limitations on those characteristics. If his hunger gets too heavy, too high, he ends up dying of hunger. If his fitness gets too low, he dies because he's unfit. If his dollars gets below zero, he uh, goes to jail because he has no money left. So for now, we're just going to try to implement, we're just going to, the first thing we try to implement is actual the class, the, the program to represent Bob. And then secondly, we're going to represent a 
let's send Bob to these different states, home, work, or gym, and try to keep him alive for as long as possible. So you can download uh, uh, an Eclipse project if you've done some programming before. Uh, these are a couple Java programs. If you haven't used Eclipse, you can put those Java programs in whatever development environment you do use. So I'm going to show Eclipse now. So first of all, there's a class to represent Bob. And we can set his location, uh, send him home, send him to the gym, send him to work. So this is already all implemented. You, you Don't worry about the details. But you can see when he's at work, he gets more hungry, but he gets more dollars, but he gets less fit. When he's at the gym, he gets more hungry. He loses dollars, but he gets more fit. And when he gets when he's home, he uh, basically just loses dollars and gets less, gets less hungry. Uh, but he's always got to be uh, uh, at least zero. He can't get any more hunger than zero. So this is already implemented. The second class is the one that we can try a little experimentation with. So we're basically going to have uh, a series of locations to send him to. And currently I have him just sending him to work and then to home and then the gym and then back home. And we're going to try to uh, iterate over these four locations currently a thousand times and try to keep them alive. So your only, if, only thing you need to do is try to come up with a sequence, a short sequence of locations that will basically keep them alive. So if we just run this one with this sequence of four, we say, see he stays alive uh, 24 iterations. So we went through the sequence six times basically and eventually he ran out of money and went to jail. So your challenge is to come up with a different sequence, and you can just change this around, copy and paste. You can separate them by commas, cut as do as long of a sequence as you want, and then try to run the program and see if you can keep them alive for a thousand iterations. So again, if you come up with a good sequence, you can always email me. My email address is shown here, bauerm at iit.edu, and show me how well you did in that challenge of coming up with a sequence of states for Bob that will make sure he uh, uh, has enough money, that he uh, is, doesn't get too hungry, and his fitness stays above zero.